Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome to our continuing coverage of men's and women's Olympic qualifying here on IIHF.com. I'm Paul Romanuk in Voyens, Denmark. Here in Voyens, things wrapped up in terms of sending a team to Sochi after two games. It was the surprising Slovenians turning that trick. More on them a little bit later on. Right now, though, lots of pertinent games to get to. We will start our tour off in Germany with Group D. The early game there between Italy and the Netherlands was just for the record. It all came down to the second game of the day between Austria and Germany. The Germans needed to win to punch their ticket to Sochi. For the Austrians, a tie during regulation time would do the trick. The reporter asking the questions at the end of the story is Martin Merck. Could not get a seat in Bietigheim, Bissingen, Germany for this one. Late first period, German power play. Benedict Cole goes to the net and redirects the point shot of Konstantin Brown. And the Germans take the lead. Watch Cole just off the edge of the crease. Gets a stick on it. Got it. Alexander Barta, big chance here for a 2-0 lead. And goaltender Bernard Starkbaum with the save. Second period now. And Andre Lakos ties it up for Austria. Just caught the corner. Third period, 6.54. Michael Wolf on the power play gives Germany a 2-1 to one lead. And the place is going crazy. This one goes in just off the side of the keeper. But with 7.38 to go, Marcus Pinter will tie it up. And the Germans are stunned. The game is tied. It went to overtime. Germany won, but it didn't matter. The regulation tie did it for Austria, and they are headed to Sochi. How do you feel when you saw that the puck went in for a 2-2 goal? Uh, I didn't think too much, actually. I just wanted to score, and uh, I think I hit the post, so a little bit lucky, too. But at the end, maybe... I think we had a really good tournament and we deserved that. Unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's fucking. I still can't believe it, and I think everybody in the room, we're just happy that we made this point, and I think we deserved it. We played a really hard, good tournament, and everybody stick together, and I think that's why we had success. We had a lot of shots, we had a lot of chances. We didn't give a lot for Austria, and um, it's just really, really sad that we didn't get the one lucky bounce or the one lucky shot or um, to score the third goal. Because in my in my eyes, um, we would have deserved it, uh, especially with a game like today. And um, but, anyways, congrats to Austria for going to Sochi. Well, I mean, we battled as hard as we could. I mean, we, we left everything out there. We had injured players, everybody stick together, tried everything what was what needed to, to have success and I think everybody really deserved to, to go to Sochi now. And to Sochi they will go. Germany winning 3-2 but it didn't matter. Here is how the standings finish up. Austria in first place and they qualify for the Olympic Games. All right, so now we turn our attention to Group E in Riga, Latvia. And uh, what a game here. The early game, it was Kazakhstan dominating Great Britain by a score of 6 to nothing. And here is the scenario heading into the second game. Now listen closely to this. It can get just a little bit convoluted as these tiebreak situations tend to. Latvia had to pick up a win in order to qualify, to move on to Sochi. France needed to win by two goals in regulation to qualify or by a one goal margin with at least four goals scored during regulation to move on. Kazakhstan still held out hope. They still had a chance if France won by one goal in regulation time with less than four goals scored, then the Kazakhs would go through. So it's Latvia, France. Latvia need just a win or a tie in regulation. But in this one, it is France 
who silenced the capacity crowd by striking first. Damian Fleury, just two minutes and 50 seconds into the game, scores. And then another at 14.50, Laurent Mounier, and it's 2-0 for France. And a nightmare for Latvia. But cue the comeback. Loris Darzens, 14.59 into the second period. Got it. And look at this move. So the crowd is right back into it. Sensing that their team has the momentum and coach Ted Nolan feeling the pressure back at the bench. Third period now, 12 seconds in and Martins, Karzums will tie the game. Now remember, France need to win by two in regulation to qualify. So coach Dave Henderson pulls the goaltender twice. And they try to get the offense going. Pressing. But they can't do it. And time runs out. France did win the game in overtime, but it didn't matter. It's Latvia off to Sochi. Adam Stice with IHF.com here with Loris Darzins. Loris, uh, has the loss ever felt this good? <laughs> no, not really. Actually, I celebrated after it was 2-2, two -two and uh, obviously it felt like we won the game. So uh, a couple of guys who were on the ice who were celebrating like, like a win, and then the ref came up and said, we got to still keep on playing. But that's okay. It's, it, it took even longer. So we were on the bench and never felt so happy and relaxed during the game. <laughs> Um, going back to 2006, uh, you finished in Torino, you uh, retired from your national play. Yes, At that time, did you ever think you'd be back here qualifying for another Olympics? No, 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 no I did not. And, uh, but, well, it happened and I'm uh, really glad I was a part of this, uh, this experience and this team that uh, I really did uh, quite a good job. Mm -hmm. Uh, speaking of Ted Nolan in the press conference, he mentioned that uh, you had a big role in uh, calming the players down a bit after you guys fell down, fell back to nothing. Uh, what did you say to the guys? Uh, I don't remember really, um, but uh, it was it was. It's not just me. There was a whole locker room. We knew what was uh, what was on the table, what was at stake. To uh, and uh, of course, after uh, being down to nothing, it was like, oh boy, we got 40 minutes to turn around. Mm -hmm. Or we're not going to Olympics, and uh, that's where the that's where the boys showed a uh, lot of character and uh, willingness. So final day, uh, GB going down to Kazakhstan, six nothing. France wins in overtime against Latvia, but it is not enough. It is the Latvians qualifying here for the in Olympic Games. Meanwhile, as I mentioned earlier, points. the story was Slovenia, the Cinderella team. They were ranked three coming into this tournament. Three of the four teams here in Voyens, and they wrapped it up after two games. Let's take a look back at a storybook finish for Slovenia. What is not to like about an underdog story? Slovenia, a tiny country that has never qualified for the Winter Olympics in hockey. Oh, I think I'm speechless right now. I, uh, we, know, we knew before the tournament that we have a slight chance, but uh, uh, to be there in two games already, I don't think nobody expected that. So I think we were third seeded in the group and uh, uh, our, our team spirit really brought us to the Olympic Games. I think that was our uh, sixth player. We hope, we didn't expect that uh, that's going to be easy at all because we play against two higher ranking teams. Uh, we all know that Belarus and Denmark, they are <coughs> consistently playing in pool A of uh, world hockey, so they are their top, top world teams and um, how can I say, like 2010 when I took over the national team, we want to put some some goals for us. So one of one of these goals was also <coughs> Olympics in Sochi. So if you don't have big expectations, then you can't expect nothing. So uh, we hope, we dream, and you know, rather than me, when dreams come true, that's it. So about two million people live in the country. There are only 148 registered male players and only eight rinks in the entire country. 
They headed into their final Olympic qualification tournament ranked three out of the four teams in Voyens, Denmark. And they defied the odds, winning their first two games against Belarus and Denmark and nailed down a spot in Sochi. We're coming from a small country, there's not too many uh, hockey players and uh, we're excited that we can play for our country and that's our extra energy because at some point we're missing maybe some quality but uh, being on that team it's something special. The country's biggest star will be LA Kings star Andrzej Kopitar. That's his father, Matyaz, who coaches the team. How soon did Andrzej call you after the game? Oh, he called me right away, but I couldn't reach the phone because we had a lot of uh, a lot of actions <laughs> after that. But I can tell you, before before we came to Denmark, uh, he said, "Sorry, I can't help you right now, but I'm ready for Sochi." So here we go. And here we go. Final day. Uh, both games inconsequential. Slovenia defeating Ukraine, so they are perfect through the tournament, and they finish in first place. Look at that. Nine points. Who would have guessed? So let's turn our attention now to the women's qualification. It was already wrapped up in one group, more about that in a moment. So it was on the line in Group C in Poprad, Slovakia, and it was Denmark, a bit of a surprise team in that group with a shot to move on. To do that, they would have to beat Japan. The winner between Japan and Denmark going to Sochi. Denmark with a good chance early on. Henriette Ostergaard right in there, but she is stopped. Japan strikes 9.07 into the first period on the power play. Miko Shishiuchi with the goal. And the great celebration. <laughs> Denmark press again. Josephine Jakobsen with a chance here. Scramble around the front of the net, but no goal. Late in the first period, Hani Kubo will score to make it 2 0 for Japan. And then 7 22 of the second period, Yuka Hirano makes it 3 0. Japan go on to win this game by a score of 5 0. And with the bow and the celebration, they are off to Sochi. Well done. Here's how things finish up in Group C. Japan with that 5-0 win. They move on, finishing in first. Seven points, a couple of wins, and only one overtime loss. And meanwhile, in the other group, Group D, the, uh, the last day, inconsequential. It had already been decided. Uh, Germany with a perfect 3-0 record, and they finish in first place with nine points and an Olympic berth. So that wraps up our coverage of the men's and women's Olympic qualification events here on IIHF.com. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Paul Romanuk. So long for now.